Repeat rules are used if you want to apply a modification to some of the features that have been repeated several times. So in this example I've got four line features which make a square, they're then repeated a hundred times to get a box. This is what this box looks like and if I use a repeat rule I could shift the top section of layers to be slightly offset in the x or y direction or however we want. So to do that I'll add a feature after my design. I'm going to choose repeat rule and I'm going to say offset linear. This is going to linearly offset those features and I'll do it by let's say one millimeter in the x direction. The feature doing the repeating is feature 5 here, Cartesian repeat. The features that are being repeated by that feature and the ones that I want to modify are features 1 to 4. And what I'm going to say is we've got 100 repeats. I'm going to say from the 50th repeat to the 100th, we're going to do offset linear and we're going to move them by 1 millimeter in the x direction. And this is saying, do you want to apply it to the start and the ends of those lines? So I do want to change both the starts and ends. Most of the time you'll have yes and yes here. So now if I generate the g-code, you see it's shifted those top few layers. So often it's very useful to do a, a gradual change. So if I, instead of offset linear, if I add a feature which is offset linear increment, so repeat rule and now I choose offset linear increment, this means it's going to do that um, offset each layer and incrementally increase it. So again it's going to be feature 5, 1 to 4. So if I do it from say layer 50 to 100 again and I'm going to offset by 0.2 millimeters. So that's actually the same as the layer height and that means each time we move up by 0.2 millimeters we're going to move in the positive x direction by 0.2 millimeters so we'll get a 45 degree shift. There you can see that. And if we wanted to do that to just one of these walls then we could say instead of doing it to features 1 to 4 I can just do it for feature 2. And what that will do is achieve that. So you can see we've got this problem that the nozzle printed the first wall and then it's fast traveling to the new start position of our second wall. So what we can also say is we actually want to modify the end of this first wall because the nozzle is traveling in this direction and we want to modify the beginning of this third wall. So if I copy this twice and then for the first wall and the third wall, we only want to change the end of the first wall. So I'm going to put no, say don't affect the beginning of that wall and the beginning of the third wall. So I'm going to say no, do not affect the end of that third wall. So now that's achieved our structure. So another type of offset linear is offset linear increment graded and what this means is the amount that we're telling it to offset in the x direction is going to be incrementally increased each time but it's actually changing the amount that it's changing by each time so it's kind of a, a square relationship. Um, so after 50 layers the increment per layer will be this value times by 50, which means the total increment will be the sum of all the previous layers plus that one. So if I show you what this actually looks like, it's a lot easier if you just play around and see how it works. I've replaced our linear increment features with linear increment graded, so it's skipped, it's not using the linear increment ones at all anymore. And that will change it, so we get this gradually increasing offset, so it's steeper at the top the offset than it is at the bottom because the increment per layer is incrementally increasing. And now just to show a final thing about linearly offsetting with a repeat ball, uh, we've mostly focused or we've fully focused in the x and y directions at the moment, but if I go back, skip these graded ones and go back to the incremental offsets, 
instead of offsetting in the X, which is these ones, so I'll set these to be zero, we can offset in the Z, which will be these three parameters. So if I offset by, let's say, minus 0.1, that's going to mean instead of moving the nozzle up by 0.2 each layer, it's going to move it up by 0.2 and then actually down by 0.1. So it's only going to be moved up by half the intended layer height. So what that means is this right hand side of the structure is going to get incrementally lower and lower than the left hand side. So we can end up with non-planar layers and if we zoom into the side you can see how those layers have a constant layer height on the left and then at the 50th layer onwards the layer height has halved on the right hand side. So that's how we can get our non-planar layers. And of course, we could also vary the extrusion rate to reduce it so it's 50% smaller at this end or whatever other factors we wanted. I'll just introduce a few of the other repeatable options. So I'm going to skip the ones that we were just using and then activate this feature 12, which is an, a polar offset repeatable. So instead of offsetting linearly in the x, y or z directions. This is going to be a polar uh, rotation or radial expansion. So the middle of our box is in 60x and y. And what I'm going to say is if we rotate by 45 degrees for layers 50 to 100, and we're not going to change the radial displacement, so we'll put that as zero. And we do want to change the start and ends of all of our features one to four. What that would do is rotate the top few layers by 45 degrees. So it looks like that. And you can see that full control added some automatic travel. Obviously this wouldn't print, but you can see the type of control you have. And just like with um, offset linear, we had offset linear increment, we've got offset polar increment. So if I skip the offset polar feature and now do the offset polar increment, then we want to have the same center of rotation. And let's say we rotate by one degree for each um, each repeat. And let's also, let's leave the radial displacement for the time being as zero. I'll show you that shortly. So now each layer will rotate by one degree and we'll get this gradual twist like that. And then instead of having a rotation, this term was for radial expansion. So if we had a radial expansion of 0.2 millimeters every layer, and we didn't have any rotation, then all of these nodes are gonna move away from this center point so we can get this diverging structure. And of course, we can contract it. We could change our center point. So if we diverge away from uh, one of the corners, so now this is gonna be saying our, our center of rotation or our center of uh, radial expansion is now in the bottom left corner, then what that will do is switch it. So the different sections are being expanded away from this point, which clearly has no effect on this corner and then moves this corner to move directly away from it, that one directly away from it and that one directly away from it. So we can get this uh, control how the expansion is, is being applied. I can also vary the width. So in this case, I'm saying for layers 50 to 100, I'm going to change the nominal width. We've currently set the width to be 0.5 millimeters for our filaments that we're extruding. So now if I change that to be one millimeters, then we'll double the extrusion rate. And we can see that because then at, when the Z height is 10 millimeters, we'll get this sudden change from previously we're extruding two millimeters for every wall of the box. So each line here is representing one wall. And then at 10 millimeters, 10.2, it's increased to extrude four millimeters cubed for the automaker. And again, we can do a incremental increase so if we wanted to gradually increase the width of our filaments 
to 1 over 50 layers, then we'd have to increase it by 0.01 every layer, uh, because then we would have 50 layers times by 0.01 is going to be 0.5, which will increase from the original 0.5, extra 0.5 will make it 1. In this case, it should be constant extrusion amounts up until 10 millimeters. That's what we've got. Extrusion of 2 up until Z is 10.2 millimeters. And then the extrusion is just increasing a little bit each layer until it should be 4 at the very end. 4.04. So that would result in a gradually tapering wall thickness. We can do the same for f-speed. I won't bother showing f-speed, it's obvious. f-speed increment, if we're currently at a speed of 1000, we could say for the, the last 50 layers, let's increase speed by 10. And we'll see at the end, it's printing at 1500, 1510, and then it's gradually increasing each new layer from what it was originally 1000 and then it's increasing by 10 each second each uh, layer so this is a kind of introduction to repeat rules there are some other repeat rules as well that I haven't discussed these are so changing tool generic parameter and the maths ones I'm going to save them for another tutorial which is more um, suited to those uh, aspects.